Hello fellow raiders and welcome to my humble abode. Last time I went back in time a little and made a video about the last revelation that was a lot of fun. And today I'd like to focus on another quite underrated game, Rise of the Tomb Raider. To be honest, I wanted this video to be something completely different but the topic I was interested in got bigger and bigger. So I guess you'll have to be patient before I let it out, but I will. So instead I had the idea to simply rank the 5 best, most memorable, most enjoyable puzzles in Rise of the Tomb Raider. I will be looking into challenge tombs, yes, but not exclusively. If you want to contribute, just close your eyes, this is what I did, and think about the 5 puzzles giving you the most vivid impression and giving the game its identity. Don't forget to share that in the comment section below and there's a channel update at the end, so please have a look if you subscribe to my channel. And now, let's dive in. Oh wait, Lara, I couldn't dive in this game. It's a no f Well, let's jump in I guess. Fire. Bang, bang. Uh -huh. Okay, let's start with something everyone will agree with, hopefully. I believe that this sequence in the game not only contributed to giving the game its identity, it also foreshadowed the kind of challenge tombs we will have in the next game. Big. 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 Big? Big. Big League. Big puzzles. Don't get me wrong, the trebuchets ain't the real puzzle here. The puzzle is actually when you have to fix them, knowing that your goal is to destroy the main gate. <sighs> Too high. The puzzle itself is a mixed bag of mechanics recycled from challenge tombs early in the game like the House of the Afflicted and the Ice Ship. That's why I put it on my list. And there's also a challenge to be undertaken here. If you lit the five signal fires with the trebuchets, you will complete the Burn Baby Burn challenge. And you will receive experience as well as 2000 credits. All that knowing you have to fight your way through your lost city. What's more Tomb Raider-ish than this? The ancient cistern is a tomb that requires you to put two and two together, and actually it felt like an evolution from the previous game. This is even more obvious as Lara is required to swim, which wasn't even possible in 2013. You can swim, can't you, darling? No. It's a no f The goal of this puzzle is to raise the water high enough so that Lara can climb onto the central tower. The part where you have to throw the gas canister onto the raft, then get on it and throw it into the opening was clever. Simple, but effective. The reward allows you to see natural resources on the map and they will glow if you use survival instincts. Aside from the visuals though, the tomb itself felt a bit blank. There's some tension still, knowing you can't get out unless you solve the puzzle, but they could have added some mobs at the beginning like they did with the wolves before the house of the afflicted, or even for the next puzzle on our list. The Baths of Katesh is probably not the most beautiful challenge tomb in the game, that's for sure, but it has some good atmosphere. The puzzle itself is one of the most effectively thought in the game. The goal is easy to figure out. The water should be completely drained to reach the codex. What makes it even more effective is the way it mixes different gameplay mechanics like swimming, tethering and cranking wheels. Man, that sounds like fun. The puzzle taken aside, there's also traps, platforms and combat. The tomb itself is devoid of enemies, like most challenge tombs in this game and the previous one, but the entrance to this tomb is through a cave found in a clearing that has the distinctive barren look of a place ravaged by a bear, which guess what, makes for a quite nice most welcome mini boss fight, don't you think? No. Again, this was a step in the right direction and the reward is quite decent too, as it makes Lara climbing ability significantly faster. We certainly need more puzzles like this in future future games. Oh wait, this is what we had. In a nutshell, the pit of judgment is like the red mine, but a bit better. What makes it even more efficient is mostly that it compiles some of the best aspects in previous tombs. It's larger in scale and uses space in a very interesting fashion. 
Its most salient characteristic is the use of the minecarts. In fact, the level design is original enough to make it one of the most defining puzzle in this game. The goal is to destroy the wooden wall standing between you and the codex, your objective, and there's no room for improvisation at all. But explaining the puzzle would kind of force me to make something like a walkthrough, which is not the purpose here. The reward is, however, the most meaningful in this game, as it allows you to collect stuff you will use to improve your weapons and gear. Before we turn to the first one, let's briefly discuss those that the people tend to hate, for some reason. I wanted them in this video because I think they still contribute to building the game's identity. The Ice Ship Probably the worst puzzle in the game, but it counts as a tutorial. I think this big ice ship gives the game its tone and color, especially knowing that it comes a short time after Syria, like a mirror image of the environments the player was going through a few moments earlier. Voice of God it's essentially the same thing as the ice ship, to be honest. Yes, the visuals are stunning, and yes, the Vale is an absolutely amazing area with the mountains, sunset and waterfalls, but come on, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's super contrived, and it felt like a step back from the previous challenge too. Catacombs of the Sacred Waters I was really surprised it got so much hatred from players, like some of my videos, by the way. The architecture of the burial chamber was stunning and I personally enjoy platform-based puzzles like this. Catacombs of Sacred Waters was disappointing because it's the very illustration that everything that glitters is not gold. And the reward was a bit off at this point in the game. There is a truth behind the wall. I just want to leave, please. Yes, the puzzle holding the first position is a DLC. Deal with it. Baba Yaga is to rise of the Tomb Raider what the Golden Mask was for Tomb Raider 2. An improvement. Baba Yaga is not a puzzle in the proper sense of the term, it's a succession of puzzles, with combat sequences woven in between. When you are dead, you too shall serve. That's what my ex-wife said. The distillery gate with the counterweights, the rope works with the dangling platforms, and finally the boss fight. Let's go to basics first. A puzzle is something you have to think carefully about to put it together properly. And this is exactly what the boss fight does. To defeat the witch, you must use a series of distilling vats at the right moment, like you did earlier with the distillery gate. Oh, what do you call that already? Oh yeah. Telegraphy. Moving from a level to the next will also require you to think while you take down mobs and jump from one platform to the next. And if you are a completionist and the witch has been defeated, there's another puzzle with the timed run. Like good old days, you know. Anyway, thanks for watching this video and don't forget to share your ideas about the 5 best puzzles in Rise of the Tomb Raider. Next video we'll discuss Tomb Raider Chronicles, but if you made it that far into the video, maybe you could stay some more and have a listen to my channel update, especially if you subscribed. Guys, I need your feedback. I really like making these Top Raider videos, even if some of them don't stir much attention like this one. Also, this channel is a bilingual channel, and I fear that some people might be reluctant to subscribe because of this. So this is the first thing I had to tell you, I need your support, because anything positive that you do, and that might sound stupid to you, is actually what keeps me going, and I have bigger plans for my Top Rider series. Yes, so let me tell you more about my plans. There would be three series, the first would be short Top Rider videos like this one, on a monthly basis, then every three months there would be longer Top Rider videos about the generation of games. And the third kind of videos is a bit what I did with my all main Tomb Raider games ranked video, which means an even longer video about the Tomb Raider franchise every year. And based on your feedback, I will determine what to do in the future. Now, more than ever, your opinion matters. And remember, have fun!